All right, good morning, boys and girls. Happy Tuesday and happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, I'm wearing my St. Patrick's Day shirt. See, you can see it. It's for the 5K that I didn't do on Saturday because it was canceled. And then I had my voter sticker because I went and voted this morning. So. All right, so I wanted to show you the books that I have set aside that I want to read so that you guys can then pick books and maybe you can comment down below about what books you are reading because books are a good way to kind of get your mind off of all the craziness. Um, anyway, so this is called Paris, the novel. Look at how thick it is. It is, oh my goodness, it's like Harry Potter level reading here, guys. Oh, I think there's at least 800 pages. Okay, 803 pages. But it's about the city of Paris and it's um, it's written in novel form, but then it it's kind of tells about the history of Paris and you guys know I like nonfiction books. Yeah, this book called Coffee Break Sketching. You guys know I like art. So there is like on each page, let me show you different things to do. Like this one, um, let's find one that's a little, this one shows to draw a coffee cup on this page and then draw um, things about yourself inside. That's kind of like that heart map that we made in our in our journals and I really wish I would have sent your journals home with you so you could have done them. But we are gonna make new journals today so I'll show you how to do that. And then one more book that I haven't really started yet but I've done some of the activities in it. Another art book. This one is called One Drawing a Day and it'll tell you like um, It'll give you different exercises of different things to do. So, and it has you use a lot of materials and I have a ton of art supplies. Um, but later on, I'm gonna do a little art activity and look at these fun markers I have at my house. Aren't they fun? I'm gonna use those. And then I'm gonna read a book to you today. So I went in my garage and I found a pile of books that I was going to donate and I just, hadn't gotten them donated yet and I also brought from school I snuck into school on Sunday and I got this book it's your text collection look it's all your stories there's the earthquakes right see here's the Donnie Appleseed story yeah well I'm gonna share for you guys this story called going west which is a story that we actually would be reading. Um, well, we might still, we probably will still get to read it together, but I thought, hey, if you're watching this, you might wanna get a sneak peek at Pioneer Life. Um, so I'll read that. I'm not sure if I'll read that today. And then I have Miss Nelson is Missing, which is one of my favorite stories. I have this one on a beam of light, which is all about Albert Einstein to continue with our Mo Willems books. This one's called The Pigeon Needs a Bath. Actually kind of looks like my book might have been being chewed on by one of the dogs. Um, this one is Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, which I absolutely love this story. So I might read that one today. This one I thought might be good because um, this one is about Winnie the P the bear who inspired Winnie the Pooh. So it's a the story of Winnie the Pooh is based on a true story about this man um, who actually found a little bear cub. Um, let's see. I haven't, I, I've read it, but it hasn't, hasn't been for a while. Um, I think in Canada, maybe in Canada he finds a little bear cub. And I think it seems like the bear cub ends up going with him and then um he actually ends up going oh you can't see the pictures i'm sorry i'm not really super good at this thing yet uh youtubing um and he actually goes to the zoo and then you can see um that's that's how christopher robin starts with the poo bear and oh do you remember where does the teddy bear come from Remember which president the teddy bear comes from? We learned about it. And then in the back, you see that photo there? Get it closer. There you go. You see that photo? That's actually at the zoo in London, but I've never actually gone to the zoo when I've been in London. All those times and I've never gone to the zoo. 
Oh, hopefully I can go. Then I have this book called Fireflies. Oh, have you ever collected fireflies? Oh, this little boy collects fireflies and then um, something kind of sad happens, but at the end it all turns out okay. Oh, it's so fun to collect fireflies. I can't wait until fireflies are out. Or, I never really called them fireflies. I always called them lightning bugs. How about you? Maybe that's like an area, area thing. And this book, I just love this story. It looks like one of the pages got a little folded in here. Have you seen this book yet? Iris Sleeps Over. That's a fun one too. Maybe we'll read that one. So I have a ton of books to read. So I think maybe what I'll do is I'll read one of them. And then I'll make another uh, video of myself reading another book. And then um, I'll make a video of myself doing crafts. Because why not? I really don't have too much else to do. <laughs> so, um, And I enjoy checking in with you guys. And hope you guys are all doing okay. So, um, And are keeping busy and trying to stay out of trouble as much as possible. It's kind of a good opportunity for you guys to have some playtime and it's nice today so I really hope you get a chance to go outside. I've already take the taken the dogs for a walk. I'm watching my mom's dog today because she's working at the elections today. Um, so hopefully she's staying safe and that they were really busy. I just dropped up a coffee. I, I decided I'm going to read this one because I like it. It's one of my favorites. It's Iris Sleeps Over by Bernard Weber, and I don't think we've read it yet this year. So let's take a look. It is, there's a dedication right there. So remember, a dedication is like they, the author can um, write the book for someone or decide to like dedicate or give the book to someone. That was Zuzu you heard in the background. I don't know if she's going to want to read with me. Zoo! Zuzu! That's my mom's dog, Zuzu. Maybe she comes over, I'll show her to you. All right, so it says, I was invited to sleep at Reggie's house. Was I happy? I had never slept at a friend's house before. Look at that. Have you had a sleepover? Yeah. It's exciting. A lot of you have sleepovers like, oh, don't touch your face. <laughs> with like your cousins and that kind of thing when you're this age, right? Or neighbors, yeah. All right, look at that picture. That's a kind of cool picture, right? So this is his sister, and his sister kind of gives him a hard time right away, right? Like his older sister, I think they're meant to give you a hard time. That's kind of why they're there. She says, are you taking your teddy bear along? Taking my teddy bear along, I said, to my friend's house? Are you kidding? That's the silliest thing I ever heard. Of course I'm not taking my teddy bear. Don't you think he probably wants to take his teddy bear? And then she said, Where's the picture? Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. But you never sleep without your teddy bear. How will you feel sleeping without your teddy bear for the very first time? Hmm? Is she being nice? Not really. She's kind of picking on him. Isn't she's so cute. She's a tiny little thing. She's a kakapoo. Yeah, she's got a little cubs thing because my mom loves the cubs. And she's wearing her little sweater. Isn't it so cute? Say hi. Zuzu, say hi. Look over here and say hi. Say hi, boys and girls. My name is Zuzu. Nice to meet you. Oh, she's like, I think she's seven. So she might be the same age as some of you guys. So back to our story. Here we go. So he's saying to his sister, after she's picking on him about the teddy bear, she's saying, I'll, he's saying, I'm sorry, Ira is a boy. I'll feel fine. I'll feel great. I will probably love sleeping without my teddy bear. Just don't worry about it, I said. Who's worried, she said. But now, here we go. She had me thinking. Now she really had me thinking about it. I began to wonder, suppose I won't like sleeping without my teddy bear. Suppose I just hate sleeping without my teddy bear. Wait a minute, it says, I can't read that part. Should I take him? And there's his teddy bear. He's thinking about, oh, should I take my teddy bear with his sleepover? Take 
him, said my mother. Take him, said my father. But Reggie will laugh, I said. He'll say I'm a baby. I like those illustrations. They're pretty. Look at all the patterns and stuff. He won't laugh, said my, mo my mother. He won't laugh, said my father. This reminds me of um, the Kevin Hankins book, um, Chrysanthemum, I think, where the parents are telling, are the, the pattern of the words of the dialogue is very similar when the parents are talking to her. He'll laugh, said my sister. I decided not to take my teddy bear, but look at what kind of feeling do you think he has? Oh, I think he probably feels kind of worried, right? He's not sure if he'll be able to sleep without his teddy bear. It's hard to sleep when you're not, when you're somewhere different anyway, right? When you're not used to it. All right, I'm gonna have to read this page. So you get to look at the cover for a second because it's too many words for me to read backwards and inside out or whatever's happening on the video. That afternoon I played with Reggie. Reggie had plans, big plans. He said, tonight when you come to my house, can you see the picture if I do the graph? Okay. We are going to have fun, fun, fun. First, I'll show you my junk collection. And after that, we'll have a wrestling match. And after that, a pillow fight. And after that, we'll do magic tricks. And after that, we'll play checkers. And after that, we'll play dominoes. And after that, we can fool around with my magnifying glass. Great, I said, I can hardly wait. Look at this cool bike. It has a banana seat. My bike had a banana seat when I was little. And then streamers. Yeah, I loved that bike. All right, Um, I was just thinking while I was reading. I'm super distracted today. I was thinking that if you wanted to, you could use this book for one of your choice board activities. And so you could think about who are the characters in the story, right? Who's the main character in the story? And what problem does he have? Right? You've got it figured out already, right? Ira's the main character. And what's that problem? Is the problem that he's going to a sleepover? Or is the problem that he's not sure about his what he should bring? Seriously, stop. She likes scratching like that. It's like she's trying to make a nest or something. By the way, I asked, so he's still talking to his friend Reggie, what do you think of teddy bears? <laughs> They're like behind the bike tire there. You see that? That's pretty cute. It's okay, Susan. Got to blow on the page to get it to turn. But Reggie just went on talking. Sorry, that noise is the dog trying to lay down in a comfortable spot. Here's a picture. Okay, take a good look. They're walking behind the garage. It says, but Reggie just went on talking and planning as if he'd never heard of teddy bears. And after that, he said, do you know what we can do after that? I mean, when the lights are out and the house is really dark, guess what we can do? What, I asked. We can tell ghost stories. Ghost stories, I said. Ghost stories, said Reggie. Scary, creepy, spooky ghost stories. I began to think about my teddy bear, right? Because he doesn't want to tell a scary stories. So this says, does your house get very dark, I asked. Uh-huh, said Reggie. By the way, I said again, what do you think of teddy bears? Look at that page. Look at the paint that they use on that page. Isn't that amazing? Suddenly, Reggie was in a big hurry to go someplace. See you tonight. See ya, I said. I decided to take my teddy bear. So now he's changed his mind. Remember, the, the character can change their mind through a story. They're, they can change their mind based on things that have happened, right? Here we go. Uh-oh, he's back with his sister again. What if Reggie wants to know your teddy bear's name? Did you think about that? And did you think about how he will laugh and say Tata is a silly baby name even for a teddy bear? He won't ask, I said. He'll ask, she said. I decided not to take my teddy bear. We changed his mind again. Poor Ira. He should be getting excited for a sleepover, but he's having so much difficulty. At last, it was time to go to Reggie's house. Good night, said my mother. Good night, said my father. Sleep tight, said my sister.
There he is, look, he can climb over the little railing to be in Reggie's, right by Reggie's house over the little fence there. I went next door where Reggie lived. That night, Reggie showed me his junk. He showed me his flashlight. I gotta read it like this, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't read the words, they're like backwards when I look at it. He showed me his flashlight, his collection of bottle caps, a chain made of chewing gum wrappers. Oh, that, that'd be something to keep you busy. They like folded all the chewing gum wrappers. Some picture postcards, an egg timer, jumbo goggles, a false nose and a mustache, and a bunch of, bunch of old rubber stamps and labels from his father's office. See the labels? We decided to play office with the rubber stamps. Well, that'd be fun. You could play office. You could play school too. After that, we had a wrestling match and a pillow fight. And after that, Reggie's father said, bedtime. There's his father. There's the kids getting ready for bed. Is he gonna kiss you? Okay. All ready, said Reggie. All ready, said his father. We got into bed. Good night, said Reggie's father. Good night, we said. Reggie sighed. I sighed. We can still tell ghost stories, said Reggie. Do you know any, I asked. Uh-huh, said Reggie. Reggie began to tell a ghost story. Ooh, I'm glad we're not reading this in the dark. This could be too scary. Once there was this ghost, and he lived in a haunted house. Only he did most of the haunting himself. This house was empty except for this ghost because nobody wanted to go near this house. They were so afraid of this ghost. And every night this ghost would walk around the house and make all kinds of clunky, creaky sounds. A roomp, a roomp, like that. And he would go around looking for people to scare because that's what he liked most to do, scare people. And he was very scary to look at. Oh, was he scary to look at? See how the illustrator made it look dark? I'm almost to the page where it's gotten kind of bumpy from being bent. Reggie stopped. Are you scared, he asked. Uh-huh, I said. Are you? What, said Reggie. Are you scared? Just a minute, said Reggie. I have to get something. What do you have to get, I asked. Oh, something. Look at that picture. Can you see what Reggie has to get? Can you see it? Reggie pulled something out of a drawer. The room was dark, but it, I could see it had fuzzy arms and legs and was about the size of a teddy bear. I looked again. It was a teddy bear. So Reggie has his own teddy bear that he hid in the drawer during the sleepover. But he must have scared himself with his own ghost story. There's Reggie. Look at they did the writing here. That's a good idea. You could do if you're um, working in your journal. You could do like a picture at the top and then make like a shape. And then this is supposed to look like the blanket that he's pulling over. But then they put the text on there. That's pretty cool. Reggie got back into bed. How about this ghost? He said. Is that your teddy bear? I asked. What? Said Reggie. Is that your teddy bear? You mean this teddy bear? The one you're holding. I said. Uh-huh, Reggie answered. Do you sleep with him all of the time? What, said Reggie. Do you sleep with him all the time? Uh-huh. Does your teddy bear have a name? Does your teddy bear have a name? I said louder. Uh-huh, Reggie answered. What is it? You won't laugh, said Reggie. No, I won't laugh, I said. Promise? I promise. It's Foo-Foo. Did you say Foo-Foo? Uh-huh, said Reggie. Now, I would say that maybe at this point of the story, you could stop, pause the video for a little bit, and maybe you could pretend like you're telling your friend all about this story. Who are the characters in the story? What's the problem? And I would make a prediction then. What do you think, look at that picture, what do you think is going to be the solution to Ira's problem? All right, let's keep going. Just a minute, I said. I have to get something. What do you have to get, Reggie answered. 
owe something, I answered. Look at the picture. There you go. The next minute, I was ringing my own doorbell. The door opened. Ira, everyone said, what are you doing here? I changed my mind, I answered. You what, said your mother? Said my mother. You what, said my father? You what, said my sister? She was still up. Like, she probably got to stay up because he was over at a sleepover, right? I changed my mind, I said. I decided to take Tata after all. I went upstairs. Look at this. Soon I was down again with Tata. See, that's the same as the front. Kind of. Similar, right? And my sister said, this is the page that got kind of bent up. Reggie will laugh. You'll see how he'll laugh. He's going to fall down laughing. He won't laugh, said my mother. He won't laugh, said my father. He won't laugh, I said. See, remember, the sister doesn't know that Reggie has a teddy bear. I came back into Reggie's room. I have a teddy bear, too, I said. Do you want to know his, his name? I waited for Reggie to say, uh-huh, but Reggie didn't say, uh-huh. Reggie didn't say anything. I looked at Reggie. He was fast asleep. See him sleeping right there with his cute little teddy bear? Just like that, he had fallen asleep. Reggie! Wake up, I said. You have to finish telling the ghost story. But Reggie just went to sleep, holding his teddy bear closer. And after that, well, there wasn't anything to do after that. Good night, I whispered to Tata, and I fell asleep too. All right, well, that's kind of a fun story to read, right? Iris sleeps over. Um, probably not 